Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan Ray again, and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you very much for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. And today I'm pretty excited because I'm actually gonna walk you through creating another shader. And in this shader, I'm gonna focus on a couple of different notes. We're gonna look at what I call the gradient, the gradient noise. We're also gonna be looking at how we can add normal changes. So I'm gonna be using what's called the normal strength and also the normal height to change some of the normals, which is gonna allow us to change the way that the geometry works. And we're gonna be creating what I call an abstract art. And let's jump into Unity and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna be doing. All right guys, so let's do a couple of things right now and I'm gonna be basically open the Unity LWRP Essentials, which I pushed to GitHub last time. And if you haven't watched the video that I did previously, I'm gonna put it in the description of this video. So let's click on that to open it. And in this session, what we're gonna be doing, like I said in the introduction, is we're going to be creating and, and bringing in a new shader that I that I already created, but I'm gonna walk you through what I did. And in that shader, it's gonna allow us to modify what we call the normals of, a, of basically of a shape, of a sphere. And the reason why I wanna create, when I wanna create that is because I want to create a really cool effect that is gonna allow us to simulate a couple of procedural what I call procedural shaders. So let's go ahead and, and start and start working on that. So this is basically shader two that we created last time. So I'm going to just show you show you the scenes that we have. We have the the main scene. Like if I hit play, you can see what that one does. Basically generates generates an effect that is really really cool. And you have some bloom effects, and you can change basically those outlines like I showed you in the previous video. The, the number two, it basically creates what I call a vertex displacement and, and it looks really, really cool because you can, you can also modify these ones independently and I also put that in the previous video and it's also in GitHub and so what I want to do right now is I want to create a new scene for, for, the, for the new shader so what we're going to be doing is I'm going to clone shader underscore two and it's going to be now shader three and we're just going to basically double click it and I'm going to I'm going to delete some of these. Let's see. Let's actually delete. Let's delete them all. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna delete the ground. Let's create a new 3D object. And we're gonna start from scratch. And I'm gonna create a sphere. And I want that sphere to be a zero zero zero. So we'll just put it right there. And we can also name this shader on underscore three so that it matches everything that we're going to be doing. Excellent. So the other thing that I'm going to be doing is I could create the shader from the basically from the ground up, but I think that one took me a little while to figure it out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy it from my desktop, which I already saved. And this one is shader underscore three. So it's going to drag and drop it there. And there's a shader that I created. The other thing that I created is I also created a basically a post-processing profile. And if we go into settings and we can also make this smaller so I can see it as a list and we can see the names. So I have post-processing profile one and two. This one is for scene one, this one is for scene two. I'm gonna create this one. This was the one that I created, but it's actually underscore three. So it doesn't conflict with the other ones that we have. And I'm just gonna drag it and drop it there. And all it is, it just has basically different bloom settings. It has different color grading settings. And you can go here and change them if you want as well. I want to save you that time and, and basically import that. So that's all I need as far as the like components. So the other thing that I'm gonna do is I, I have shader underscore to open. So we're gonna, we're gonna open basically shader three. So we're gonna go into shaders and double click on shader three to open it up and I'm gonna bring it down to one of these tabs and we're gonna close shader underscore two and we don't need to save those changes. Perfect, so this is what I have so far for the new shader. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm going to assign it, but I also want to show you how it works in every component. So I'm gonna go into materials and, and right now, if you notice, I have one, two, three, and underscore four, and they don't really correlate with what we're doing right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name, let's see, we're gonna name this one on the materials. This is gonna be underscore 
underscore one one and one two this one is now going to become four let me see oh this one is, is going to become one underscore three because the oh wait a minute this is actually two underscore one yeah so this one these ones are the materials for the second for the second scene so i'm just going to make him two so i have three on the second scene so this is going to tell me that i i have this material associated with scene two and this is material two material three so that we can get you know we can get three and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to clone the last one here and we're just going to name this one three and don't worry about this because i'm going to share it in github just a way for me to to you know as this scene grows and this project grows i want to be able to keep track of all of them so okay perfect so we have that then the next thing that we need to do is we have the inspector right here i'm just going to move it down so that i can see see this actually snap it on the bottom there and i'm going to go into shaders and shader graph and assign shader underscore three perfect and so now i have a material now i need to assign it with the game object and you can now see that game object is being assigned and we can hit save just to make sure that everything it's good and right now it's really hard to see because we we honestly don't, we haven't really set any parameters but just know that you know if i were to if i go in you can kind of see that we're starting to get some you know some movement in there there's there's actually some changes that are happening so we'll make it look we'll make it look good as we as i show you this component so so what i'm what are we doing here is we're we're actually modifying the normals I, I am modifying what you're seeing in here is you see how everything is moving. So, so when we modify the normals, we can make modifications on basically in our shapes. So how we make modifications in our shapes is in this case, what I have in here is multiple nodes. So when I started working on this, I wanted to use something that was generating noise and I could use that noise to modify the geometry on the shape that I was creating. So in this case, I'm creating a, I'm creating a sphere. So I, you know, I had the option to use different type of noises. So if I right click in here, create node, and you type in the word noise, you can see that I could do, you know, a noise sine wave. I could do a great gradient noise. I could do a simple noise. So you're welcome to try any of them. Any of them, they just create different effects. I, I'm using a gradient noise right now. So if you want to try a different one, just try a different one and. And you know, I think the key here is to experiment as much as you can, because that's how, how I'm learning a lot of this. So not only I needed to create a gradient noise, but the gradient noise takes a scale parameter. So if I were to delete this line, you can see that now this is set by default to 36. So, and now everything is gonna change. So if I hit save, it's gonna be much thicker noise so but i wanted to control the scaling so if i want to make it you know if i want to make it bigger if i want to make it smaller i wanted to control that through a timer so what i did is i added a timer which allows me to you know modify things on a on a period and then i also added a property called scale so the scale is basically getting combined so it's get it's a vector one it's getting combined into this add then I'm getting the timer value and the result of those two is what's going into the gradient gradient scale. So if we go and connect those two together now, you can see that we are starting to get some movement, which is hard to see, but we'll see it here in a minute. So after you get after you get that, then I have the gradient noise, which I told you how to create. Once you have the gradient noise, I also wanted to do a different color. I didn't just want it to be, you know, what we're seeing right now which if I zoom in, you can kind of see there's dots and they're moving and, and it's kind of creating this really cool effect, but it's just black and white, it's really not cool. So if I want to change this to, you know, more of a yellow or like a red, then I could modify, I, mo I could modify the, you know, the noise effect. So if I, so the way that I did that is I created a color node and you can create that by, clear, by right clicking here and then searching for color and then you select it and then it creates this thing. If you do HDR, it's gonna be a much brighter color. If you do default, it's gonna be a darker color. So I selected HDR. Then I created an add node because I wanted to combine the, the gradient noise with the color. 
You can also do a multiply. There, there's different, you know, different type of nodes that are actually doing math for us that we can use. So I did the add and that actually work work out okay. So let's actually go back into more of a red color. You can do a red. So you're gonna see that combining this with the gradient noise going into A and B. Now we turn it into red. But I also wanted to modify the, the height from the normals. So I added this normal from height and I connected the out the output to the input of the normal height. And, and the only thing that I wanted to do is also control the strength of the height. So what I did is I connected the output to a normal strength node and you can also search for either this one or this one through create node. And if you type in the word normal, I basically started experimenting with different, you know, for with different ones in here. And I landed with these two and they actually work out okay. And the strain value is really cool because I can go, so if right now I'm using a variable which I expose and I call it normal strain and it's a vector one. So I can modify it, you know, I can modify the variable through here. I can also, if I delete that property, it's, it's actually not a variable, it's a property. You can also call it a variable, I guess. And I can modify here. I can modify that value here. And if I go maybe to one, you can see how you know that is make is changing the strain of the normal strain. So I'm gonna go back to I think I had it set to like 500, and then I had this connected. Perfect. And now that's gonna be modified by the variable or property. Perfect. So once I got once I had that down. All I did was connected the normal strain, which is the result of everything that we had on the left side into the normals. And I also have a property for color. And the reason why, why I did that is because I want to control those through the shader properties here. So you can see that every property that I expose in here, which I show you in the previous videos on how to do, if you wanted to learn how to do that, watch the previous videos that I did on shaders. And I'll put, I'll put them in the description of this video for your own reference. But what that allows you to do is, I don't have to go in here, make changes to these ver these properties, and then hit save in order to see the changes. I can actually make the changes in runtime. So I'm gonna hit save just to make sure that I didn't, I didn't break anything. And if you notice, now I can modify, you know, if I wanna change the normal string, you can, you can see that it's changing in runtime. You can also change the color, which is, which is really cool. So you can see that if I change it to red, which is what I'm gonna be using, you can, ask, you can start to see how the normals are making changes to the geometry. If I want to change the scale, I can change that as well. And that is changing That is changing what I'm seeing on the on the scene view. So a lot of this is from experimentation. So I'm, I'm not a shader expert by any means, but this is really helpful because it allows me to, you know, to go through and experiment with different nodes and see how the shaders are actually affecting and and gives, gives me a better understanding on, you know, how shader works works in the first place. So the the other thing that I wanna show you is now that we have that down, so if if you notice, if I zoom in, which is what I'm gonna do, let's go in and do something like that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my main camera and I'm gonna change the size of the camera so that we can see. And right now I'm, I'm seeing what I'm seeing on the game. So I'm gonna go into the game view and we're gonna be changing a couple of things in here. So you can kind of see that I'm starting to see, I wanted to see the whole thing. I didn't wanna see the sphere because I wanna see how the patterns are gonna be changing. And maybe we can change, I think that, let me see if I can go a little closer. There we go, something like that. Because I wanna show you how that is gonna affect everything. So the other thing that I can change is the intensity of the light, which I think if I do five, that's enough. Then the other thing that I'm gonna do is on the post process process post process volume, I'm going to associate the profile that we added, which is right now pointing to underscore two. I want to point that to the one that we just added. And you can see that that's actually gonna make a change. The reason why that's making a change, like I said before, is because I changed some of these properties. I have the vignetting, it's, it's much stronger on the post processing effect. The bloom is also much stronger which is actually what, what's creating those highlights, which they're looking really cool. And if I if I were to go to vignetting and I set it to off, you can see that that is affecting it. I can also, I'm also changing the distortion of the lens. 
which you can see that if I make this value, I don't think that's making that's making much changes. See, I think the scale, yeah, I don't think that's changing that as much. So maybe we don't even need the, the lens distortion. I'm just gonna remove it. So we don't have it in the in the check-in. So I do I I do use the vignetting for sure because that we just make those changes and you can kind of see that you know that is changing. And the other thing that I did too is I used the yeah, I'm using this one for sure because you can see that I can change the temperature and the color grading really gives it a really cool effect. So I'm using ACES and that gives it like this really cool old style. If I set this to off, you're gonna see that now it looks boring. If I set it to on, it looks, you know, it, it seems like it has more personality. And and why am I doing shapes like this? I, I just love the, you know, the idea of creating abstract art. And if you, you know, if you wanna experiment with shaders, I think abstract art is a really good way to go and to learn what how things affect the shapes that you have shaders assigned to. So now that we have zoom in and I, I can make some changes on the scaling. So you can see if I'm I'm basically to a thousand, so the scale is it's it's very big, which makes everything look really, really small. If I go back to you know to be to have a zero scale, you can see that this is changing quite a bit. You can also change the normal string and uh, that's also making some changes. No not many changes but it's it's raising the basically the depth you can see that that's changing that as well so the other thing that i can do here is i can also change you know if i wanted to change the color maybe these are mountains in a 2d game as you can kind of see or maybe maybe this is a maybe this is a space game and these are the mountain mountains that are tiling behind the scenes so you can do there's like so much that you can do with you know something as simple as this because now we're creating geometry that you don't need to model. You can just basically mimic with a shader. And say that I make it, you know, if I make it, I can, you know, I can select any color. And, and you know, the sky is the limit of what you can do with this. And you can layer this with other things and, you know, make it look cool. So I try to find ways to use shaders as much as I can. So this creates a really cool effect and I really like how that looks. So let me make it a little red. There we go. So that that looks really cool there. So so that's really everything that I wanted to show you. And I'm, I'm going to be checking this in into GitHub under the basically that Unity LWRP Essentials, which is part of the lightweight render pipeline videos that I did. So make sure that you check it out and clone it and run it and see how the nodes interact with each other. You know, make sure that you you disconnect some of these ones, see how they work because that's really how I learn how to make shaders. So if you guys have any other questions, let me know through the comments. And again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also share this video. Thank you guys.